Welcome to the Castle Country Real Estate Podcast, episode number six. Happy to be back. I'm Josh Madsen from Real Estate Titans here in Price, Utah. And this podcast is all about real estate in the Carbon and Emory counties here in the beautiful state of Utah. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, we're starting our second month of the podcast and couldn't be more excited to share with you market information, uh, both locally and nationally. And we're going to be doing this every week. So the local snapshot, what is going on here in Carbon and Emory County? We're back to having 86 active properties, single family homes on the market right now. And that's great, but it's staying kind of steady right there. We're not seeing a super big increase over the past four weeks. Uh, and it's just kind of hovering there at that 85 mark. Was a little higher last week, uh, but we're seeing pretty steady. And with that said, total number of properties that sold last week was seven. So we're seeing uh, about one property per day selling uh, you know, during the week and keeping that number of those new active properties about the same. So general market information, what is happening? We're kind of talking about a lot of similar things going on each week. I think the biggest things that are coming up are what is going to happen to the housing market, sort of the relationship to the uh, consumer price index, showing how much inflation is in the economy, possible recession. And this is what I've kind of been covering the, the last couple of weeks in different ways. So we're going to kind of hit on that same topic this week. And, and starting off with, we're seeing new uh, evaluations from everyone out there talking about what is going to happen to home prices. And it's looking strong going into the fourth quarter of 2022. We're still probably going to see an average of about 10% increase in prices in single family homes. In Utah, especially why I think this is important for us to consider is Utah is an awesome state. People want to move here. And for us in Carbon and Emory counties, uh, typically this isn't a place where as many people have moved to like the Wasatch Front, but all of us that have lived here understand it's an awesome place to live. And with more remote workers, uh, people being able to work from home, there's a lot of really cool options here. And so people are starting to look at the outdoors, things to do. And like I said, any of us that have lived here for a little while understand what's around here in terms of those uh, natural resources that we can partake in when we live here. So uh, that's really what we're going to see in, in terms of home price appreciation going into quarter number four. Now, inflation is really important for us to watch. Uh, in, in both buyer and seller, and even if we're not looking to maybe get into the market right now, as consumer uh, as inflation goes up, uh, the interest rates have gone up. And we've talked about this in some past episodes that as the interest rates have gone up, it starts knocking out a certain buyer uh, category that maybe could afford the home at 3%, uh, but maybe at 5, 5.5%, they're not going to be able to do that. Now, uh, last week, uh, the inflation number did go down a little bit by half a percentage point, and that's super good because if that starts happening, we could see lower rates again, probably not going down as low as three, but that is good to kind of steady things out um, and maybe a good time to get into the market to make a purchase. And as, as far as selling your home, definitely still a strong seller's market. There's not enough homes like we keep saying over and over and over again. Uh, there is a little more supply, but if you're looking to sell your home, you can still get top dollar and uh, maybe just it's not going to be 20% increases annually. But like I just said, you're probably looking at a 10% increase at least. So I think these are the main points I wanted to focus on today. These are pretty much national trends. Uh, Utah is a hot place. People want to move here and want to move to all different parts of the state not just the Wasatch Front, and that's really important for us to understand where we live here. So your real estate hot tip for the week. If this is your first podcast you're listening to, every week I try to give a little real estate hot tip, something to get thinking about, get the juices flowing and, and understand what's going on uh, in real estate. I thought I'd go back to focusing on the buyer this week and talk a little bit about what's called due diligence. So. The process of buying a home has a lot of different components, but due diligence is one of the very, very first things that a buyer is going to do. And there's a due diligence checklist that I, as a realtor, I'm going to hand to my client and say, hey, these are all the things you can do. 
So a quick definition of due diligence is when we look at a, at a home, a lot of times we go see the home for maybe 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and then you're going to be putting an offer on that home. In most cases, and this is a good thing with having a little less pressure on the market right now, is we're able to have a more normal due diligence time period. It's not required. In fact, the past two years, people would waive this due diligence period, uh, but it's really a good idea, in, in especially now that things are starting to calm down a little bit, to take that week or two weeks of due diligence to get in. And so what it is, is the ability to do all the tests on the home. Typically, people think of it as the home inspection, but really you can do anything. Uh, a home inspection is a good place to start by hiring uh, 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 a qualified professional to come in and inspect the home, identify red flags, uh, you know, especially things like foundation and whatnot. But just, I wanted to go a little bit further. What else can you do during the due diligence time period? Uh, a really common one in Utah is a radon test. Uh, radon is, is a gas uh, that is, it can cause lung cancer and things like that. And if not ventilated properly in a basement, it can start to build up and is unhealthy. So people tend to want to do radon tests. And that's something that uh, local providers can do for you. And, uh, and, and you can do that during the due diligence period. What else could you do? Uh, it could be anything from making, having a sprinkler guy come out and check that the sprinkler lines are all working correctly. Uh, you could have an HVAC inspection. Uh, a lot of times the general inspection that you, you pay for calls out things you may want to further investigate. And that's, uh, that's what's going to help you identify whether you need to even get a more specific professional in there. But that's your real estate hot tip is knowing what the due diligence time period is and what you can get done. Pretty much anything. So hopefully that'll help you the next time that you go buy a house. Okay, to end things off, I always like to say, what's going on in the community? This weekend, we got the Helpers Art, uh, Helper Art Festival, excuse me, and that's gonna be going from the 19th through the 21st. So be sure to head, uh, head on down to Helper to check out all the amazing artists and events that they're gonna be having uh, over the weekend. So like I said, happy to be here every week. I drop a new episode every Friday and really excited to talk about real estate in the area and what's going on. Uh, you can find me, I'm at Real Estate Titans in Price uh, and you can call me directly or shoot me a text, 801-388-4047 uh, or you can reach me at josh at madsen.team or on Instagram, Facebook at madsen.team as well. I'll see you next Friday and have a great weekend.